Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with episode 2 of our Williams Road to Glory. Yesterday we're here back ready for the Spanish Grand Prix. If you missed out on yesterday's video I would definitely definitely recommend going back and checking it out as well. But yeah round 2 of the year though like we said heading over to Spain. Last time round an interesting opening race to the year there. You can see we did finish in P16. We've learned a lot about the car everything like that. Before we head into this weekend though we need to try and make sure we get a couple more upgrades on the car as well. Uh, so we've completed uh, the front wing end plate lower, uh, which means we've unlocked now the turning vanes as well. We've got 1,820 R&D points. We can definitely try and get a few more upgrades on the car uh, before we head to the next race in Spain. So we're going to go with a couple of aero and we'll try and get a chassis upgrade on the car as well, of course. Try and bring us a bit closer uh, to Alfa Romeo. We've got enough points for the energy store cell positioning as well, so we'll get that done, and you can see, overall, we're getting towards Alfa Romeo and Alfa Tauri, obviously trying to pull away a bit more from Haas as well, but yeah, let's dive in then here to the Spanish Grand Prix qualifying. Here we are then, ready for round two of the year from the Spanish Grand Prix, an unusually overcast Spanish Grand Prix for this weekend. But heading into this weekend, Haas have also brought some major upgrades, so both of us have gained some ground in on Alfa Romeo at this early stage of the year there. But hopefully, obviously, we can still out-qualify them this weekend. Of course, we want to try and do one better uh, than we did last time. You know, if we can sort of get 17th or 18th, I'd be pretty happy with that. Diving down into Sector 2. They really do feel like we're still making good progress with the setup work here on F1 2021. Just slowly getting the car positioned where we want it a lot more as well on the game, which of course will massively help us in trying to just extract maximum pace out of the car in qualifying. Don't want to overstep the mark like we did last time round. Obviously in Bahrain, but we'll wait and see as that is a lot of curb through the inside of Turn 9. There's still a bit of a lift in at this Williams through there. Slam on the anchors at the 100 meter board for turn 10. But so far this lap's been pretty nice and tidy there. Just a little bit of a hesitation over the inside bump there. So, so difficult to try and get it hooked up. So you head in towards the final couple of corners through the final chicane we go. Right, the curbs both on entry and exit there. A little kick of wheel spin as we short shift up to avoid the wheel spin. Down towards the line, it is gonna be a first time of a 117.6. Seven tenths behind our teammate George Russell. But I know we can definitely find a lot more. Right, let's head out then for our second run. We're losing most of our time in Sector 2 and at Sector 3 here. So we just need to be attack a little bit more with the car. Be a bit braver into the braking zones as well here. You know, now we've sort of got our first banker out. We know we can try and push just a little bit more in this second run. As that's a nice tidy run through Turn 1. Bit of wheel spin through Turn 2. Can we keep it pinned through Turn 3? There, a bit of a blend on the throttle on the way through. But we just about hold on on the exit of the corner there, and that's instantly a tent found through the first sector. That's what we like to see here. Just about trying to get that little bit more out of the car, get it down on those curbs through turn five, and really use the exit curb as well. Then we need to find a lot of time through turn nine this time around as well as we chuck it in through turn seven. Might give you a little bit more confidence, but really does slow us down there as that's not a good run through the final chicane. Oh, it's so annoying. You're just trying to overstep the mark ever so slightly and hold on to it. And it just hasn't happened for that time round. We've got one more chance. Let's try and get anywhere near George. This has absolutely now got to be the lap. We cannot qualify P20 on the grid for the Spanish Grand Prix. Nice and early on the throttle out of the final corner. This lap needs to be committed and it needs to be absolutely perfect as well here. George Russell... He's still quite a few tenths up at this early stage of the session, but he's not known as Mr. Saturday for anything. Whether we can beat him or not is a very, very different question, but as long as we can try and get a good lap on the board, that is really, really important there as we swing it out a bit too wide through turn two. That's going to compromise our run through turn three. They're still up, but only marginally as we head in through sector two. Try and just tip the car in and hope it sticks on the way out of the corner there, really try and get it pointed down onto that curb through turn five and then use all the exit curb 
as well. Diving it down through turn seven. That was a lot better of a run. This is where we can find a lot of time as well if you just keep it clean, keep it tidy. They're all a little bit wide over the gravel on the exit of turn nine. Now that's going to compromise our run down the back straight. Still just get it slowed down in towards ten. Got faster times coming in there as well. That's a big old wobble through the bump of turn 11. Trying to really just explore the limits of grip. So we head down in towards this final sector of the lap. They use all the exit curb through the final corner. We go big wobble from the back end. And it's only another half a tenth there just overdriving the car. And that is not what we needed at the end of qualifying. Well, there we go then. Qualifying done and dusted for the Spanish Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas on pole position ahead of Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen there. But down towards the rear of your field, George Russell, seven tenths quicker than ourselves in the end. They're up in P16, able to split the Alfa Romeos. Haas have definitely brought some upgrades as well this weekend there. But half a second off Mazepin is not what we needed. It's a long race ahead of us, though. 33 laps make up the Spanish Grand Prix. Hopefully, if we can keep our head down, the pace will come to us. The Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari and we've had many more iconic moments since. It's a sellout crowd of 140,000 here today as we await lights out for the 730 meter sprint down to turn one at this 2.9 mile racetrack. Overtaking is challenging through these 16 corners, but there's still a lot of high speed excitement to be found, including the flat out turn three and the terrifying blind right of turn nine. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle. And the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Perez, Daniel Ricciardo and Leclerc, Sainz, Norris, Vettel and Pierre Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Stroll, Esteban Ocon and Sonoda, Raikkonen, Russell, Antonio Giovinazzi and Mick Schumacher, Mazepin and Mr Monaco. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Right, here we are then on the grid, ready for round two of the year from the Spanish Grand Prix. It's looking like a nice sunny day though here in Spain. The one stop, the mediums to the hearts is looking like the way to go as well in this one here. But hopefully we can keep it clean and tidy. Get through lap one, of course. Simulation damage, remember, in this series certainly does make things interesting. But yeah, get through turn one, get through lap one all in one piece. Hopefully we'll gain some places. We can't lose any. Off the start as well. That is what we've got to remember here today. But ready on the grid then for the Spanish Grand Prix. Hopefully we can get a nice clean tidy start. Five red lights and it's lights out. And away we go there. No hold whatsoever at all. Again for the second race in this season. As everyone just tries to drop you for positions in the massive run. Down towards turn one here. Breaking nice and early. We'll have a look around the outside of Schumacher there. As has anyone come together up the road? They're three wide. Up the road, I can just see as we head through turn three. They're still side by side for ourselves uh, with Mick Schumacher there. Schumacher tries to get the drive off the exit of the corner, but we do swing it around the outside through turn four as well. We'll compromise his run on the exit, and we will make up the one spot up the inside of Mazepin as well there. We might be up two on the opening lap of this Grand Prix there. The dream little start then. Oh, no, it's not. Mazepin tries to hold it around the outside. 
never was any room there for him. He might have picked up a little bit of damage from that one. But we have survived the start of the Spanish Grand Prix. There it is still, I think, Valtteri Bottas who leads the way. Oh, that was very, very optimistic on the brakes from myself. We'll do a weird mix of the old layout of Spain as we head through the final sector. They're lucky to walk away with no front wing damage. That could have been absolute calamitous for myself and George Russell there. But unfortunately, that puts right back to the rear of the field at the end of lap one. Bottas leads the way. I think it's Verstappen into P2 there as Maspin, yeah, did have damage at the end of the first lap there. So he is also into the pit lane. They're the only man to pick up some damage on the opening lap. Can we get back past his teammate Mick Schumacher back into turn one though? Schumacher going defensive on us, but we might be able to break late down around the outside. Yes, we do. Back up at the P18 of the Spanish Grand Prix. Now, we're going to try and hunt down our teammate George Russell. The car behind is dropping back by about three tenths a lap. Nick Schumacher's trying to keep us honest early on in this Grand Prix, but we're actually taking a little bit of time out of our teammate George Russell there. It does require a pretty hooked up lap. But I think we definitely can try and drag ourselves up towards him again in this Grand Prix. And that would be really, really ideal. Giovinazzi, the gap holding pretty level as well. Alfa Romeo have a little bit more in the back pocket of pace at the moment. But Russell and I are trying to drag everything out of this thing. Caution. Oh, we got yellow Caution. flags out. It's one of the Mercedes. I think it's Valtteri Bottas out of the Spanish Grand Prix there. Is he out or has he just gone off the circuit? Has he completely bottled it by himself perhaps? Valtteri Bottas. That's not a great place to leave your Mercedes, I'll be honest. But no idea what's happened there to Valtteri. But he's going to come back out in P19 in this Grand Prix. The heartbreak of Valtteri Bottas. It has not been a good day for him in my team or the Williams Road to Glory. I reckon George Russell might have some sort of issue in that Williams at the moment. Because he is nowhere near as quick as I'd expect him to be at this stage of the Grand Prix. Because his pick up off the corners isn't great either. He definitely is struggling in that car. I don't know if he's just done something to the rubber or what. But anyway, we've got Schumacher and Bottas still right behind us. And I'm sure Bottas will be trying to slice and dice his way past us bat markers very, very soon. But when you try and get past Russell, if possible, maybe out of turn nine is going to be a possibility as well. Big kick of wheel spin there. Trying to catch the slide. Almost into the gravel trap, but we get away with it. And we definitely won't be close enough here. Right out of the final corner then. Can we get close enough to George Russell? Like we said, I think he's definitely got some straight line speed issue in this Grand Prix. We've got our first few pitters as well. But we're going to go up the inside of our teammate George Russell on the run down towards turn one. Can we get it slowed down and tidy? Yes, we can. Got a curb on the exit there. But George actually coming back at us through turn three there. It's still side by side with our teammate. But we do get clean around the outside. And now up into P12 of the Grand Prix there. Hamilton's already pit, so he's had a pit stop over Bottas from all of that. But now the fin is right behind us. Yep, Bottas is going to fly past us down the back straight. Nothing we can really do. Nothing I really want to do in this situation either. If we can get some DRS off him, that would be useful. But I think he's going to be pitting soon. And just like that, Bottas into the pits at the end of the lap. He will give us some handy DRS. We will gain a couple more spots as well. There's a couple more people into the pit lane here. So we're going to re-emerge in P11 now of the Grand Prix. Just outside the points. Leclerc's diving it up the inside as we head through lap 8. And yeah, nothing we can do again there. I was actually quite surprised Charles Leclerc managing to get the run he did on us in that situation. Okay, the position. That's us down a place. Yep, team understandably not too worried about that. We are not battling Charles Leclerc just yet in this series. And Ricardo now all over the back of us as we head on to lap 10. Yeah, again, nothing, nothing we can do at this early stage of the campaign. But yeah, George Russell really dropping back though. 1.7 behind us as Gasly now gets in between us as well in this Grand Prix. What is going on for our teammate and how in Bottas has already taken that much time out of us? Are we going to have the legs to defend from Pierre Gasly back down towards turn 1? Have we used more of the battery? We might have been able to, but yeah, nothing happening in this instance there. No real point still at this stage of the Grand Prix. Vettel and Sainz now behind us as Russell, yeah, is really dropping back at this stage. Still got both Haas behind him though, which is good. More yellow flags in this Grand Prix. Someone else has got issues. I think it's one of the Alpha Towers. I want to see it. Sonoda, who's fallen to the wayside here 
in this Spanish Grand Prix. Yes, it is. Poor Yuki Tsunoda, the first Honda Power unit we've seen go up in smoke on F1 2021 there. And that is heartbreak for the young Japanese driver in just his second ever Formula 1 race. We've now got Vettel flying up our inside. Oh, a little bit of contact. But I think we both got away with that. And here comes Carlos Sainz back past us down towards Turn 1. Yeah, Russell now nearly three seconds back and under pressure from Mick Schumacher, so no idea what's going on for our teammate, but not what he needs. Well, Mick Schumacher is the first of the backmarkers to blink in this Grand Prix into the pits as we head on to lap 13. It's going to be a long old way for him if he wants to try and get to the end on a set of the hard compound tyres. We want to be looking at about lap 15 in this Grand Prix, but just so gutting the fact, you know, all those midfield cars... You know, that we want to be trying to mix with are already way up the road again. And they've already made their first stop here. We've all still got one stop to go. We'd love to have a scrap with them later on. And here comes Bottas for the second time in this Grand Prix there. How on earth he's made up about a pit stop in, a, what, about like six laps? This time around, though, we do defend from the Mercedes. He'll have us, he'll have us down the front stretch instead. And there goes Valtteri Bottas in this Grand Prix. Team on a sin end of this one. But yeah, now George, four seconds back. Team on a sin the end of this one, though. One lap earlier than I was expecting to, but that should be okay. I remember to come to the pits at the end of this lap. Just make sure we rotate the car nice and tidy through the final couple of corners. There are a lot of kerb through the final couple of turns there. Ooh, a bit cheeky around the bollard as Bottas new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. And where are we going to come out in comparison, though, to Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin, though, in this Grand Prix? That was a big question on my mind, at the very least. We've absolutely shredded the front left tyre in this Grand Prix, but as long as we come out ahead of Mazepin, we should still be in good stead in this Grand Prix. Come on, take a gear. There we go. 2.6 isn't too bad at all. Heading out of the box. Oh, Mazepin in again, actually. So he's now trying to go to the end, like ourselves there. Schumacher's on a set of softs, though. So what's Mick Schumacher trying to do in this Grand Prix? It's definitely a two-stop. Is he then going to go on another set of mediums to the end or what? Very, very strange by the team. He's lost a lot of time as well, so I'm guessing he had some front wing damage. But very, very weird from Haas. George into the pits at the end of lap 15. We've got a couple of other people in as well. But I don't think it's going to make much difference to our Grand Prix as long as we stay ahead of our teammate George Russell here, Giovinazzi. Okay. It's still going to be a long old way down the road. But yeah, we're in a bit of no man's land at the moment. I think George is still going to stay ahead of Mick Schumacher as well, importantly. But I think we've taken even more time out of George. What has happened to our teammate today? And have Williams now got the issue sorted through the pit window? Oh, we got more yellow flags out. It's one of the McLarens. Don't say it's Ricardo again for the second race in a row here. No, I think he's just made a mistake at this stage of the day, so it might well have been Ricardo. Weird to see the AI making so many mistakes on F1 2021, but far more importantly, we're just inching closer to Giovinazzi in this Grand Prix. We're not going to do much good by doing that, however. Oh, Ricardo then, I think, was the one that made the mistake. He's dived back into the pit lane at this stage of the Grand Prix. Are we potentially going to be able to get past him? No, he's already way out by the time I get down onto the start finish straight again. But yeah, Giovinazzi, though, the gap's still coming down a couple of tenths lap after lap. So maybe, just maybe, there's something could happen towards the end. The safety Ooh. car is out. Safety car? We need you to reduce your pace. It looks like there's a high amount of debris on the track. Okay, slow down, slow down. Your delta is negative, which means you are too fast. Reduce your pace. Well, that's certainly going to make things interesting in the latter stages of this Grand Prix. No one's actually retired. Just the amount of debris out on the circuit. Is it worth pitting in onto a fresh set of mediums to get us through to the end of the Grand Prix? We won't really lose much by doing so. So I think we may as well go for it. Heading into the pit lane then at the end of lap 21. Most of the midfield have pit as well here, so we certainly wouldn't be able to defend against them in the latter stages of this Grand Prix. Giovinazzi, though, has stayed out. At this stage, I wonder if there was a tussle then between Vettel and Sainz uh, that's put that damage on the track there, because it looks like both of them have had front wing changes here. We're just going to jump on to a fresh set of the mediums to get us through to the end of the Grand Prix. As long as we stay ahead of Mazepin and Schumacher, which we will. Hopefully now, yeah, we can try and make more progress towards the end. 
Ooh, right in front of us, Carlos Sainz. His engine has gone up in a big, big way, and that is heartbreak for the Ferrari driver. They're the second Ferrari power unit we've seen go up in smoke today on F1 2021. And that was quite surprising right in front of us, but it's going to give us P16 in this race. But we will take that, thank you very much. That's hopefully one more place now that we want to try and work past there. I don't think we were going to get overtake Carlos Sainz. But I mean, looking at it, okay, if we can get past... Go racing again. The safety car is in this lap. When the field accelerates, remember... We know our safety car no works game. Until the green flags. Safety car in this lap. Like I was saying, if we can get past Russell and both of the Alfa Romeos, we could be on for like P12, P13 here. If things go our way, but of course we have got a couple of very, very quick cars around us as well. Ricardo there lurking in 12th, Vettel in P15 as well, right in front of me. Maybe we can work with Sebastian to try and slice our slice and dice our way back through. But nine racing laps to go here from the Spanish Grand Prix as we sneak our way through the final couple of corners. It's actually one of the Alpines that leads the way there. Not too sure who that is at this stage of the Grand Prix, but they must have been gifted a free pit stop. Thanks to the safety car there as we catch a big old slide out of the final quarter. That's going to leave us under pressure from the Kita Mazepin, which is not what we needed off this restart. As we head back down towards Del Mon, we'll give him a big old squeeze while they dart back out to the racing line in towards turn one. But Mazepin, no, he's pulled it off. And we picked up front wing damage there. We accidentally completely subbed Schumacher off into the gravel as well there. And that has been a disastrous restart to the Spanish Grand Prix there. Mazepin flies off up the road. And that might be us basically out of damage. it. So much okay, understeer now in the car. The car. We can't sustain this level of damage. Oh, that is going. Available on the MFT. Just a tiny bit of contact with Mazpin there. I didn't think he'd be that brave Got in that to one still mum, but we may as well pit in onto a fresh set of the soft compound tyres there. No way we're going to be able to limp this thing home. And what a disappointing way to end the Grand Prix there. We took a gamble onto the mediums and it has not paid off. And yeah, we'll dive in at the end of this one and probably just have to limp it home. To be honest, it's probably worth just diving it in and saving the engine at the end of the day here. An unfortunate demise in this Spanish Grand Prix, but we're surely not going to be able to get anything in the final few laps here. We'll pit in, and I think unfortunately, yeah, we will have to retire the car in this one. A heartbreaking end to the Spanish Grand Prix, but again, hopefully it helps in the long term uh, when we've got a car that can fight for points as well but gutted gutted with that in the end we'll bring it into the box and yeah unfortunately nothing we're going to be able to do from here to the end obviously no chance of another safety car we may as well call it quits They've done it then, a spectacular victory here in Spain and a massive confidence boost going into the next race. And talk to me, what do you think it was that sealed the win for them? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralised. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. So let's review the updated driver's standings. That lead at the top of the table has shrunk somewhat today. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? It's got to be Valtteri Bottas, a commanding performance that I think had the audience's eyes glued to him for the majority of the race. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Meanwhile, a strong weekend from Red Bull this time out, and they improve their position in the championship. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one.
Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the Spanish Grand Prix. And not the way we wanted to finish it, unfortunately. Uh, but that's the way racing goes sometimes. Now, like I said, no real point in putting more and more wear through the car. And obviously, like we saw this morning with the Monaco Grand Prix in the My Team series. Definitely, definitely don't want to overstress the car when Monaco is such a good chance for us to walk away with some points there. But Hamilton takes home the race of victory there. Somehow Bottas recovers to P2 in the end. And no idea how he managed that with fastest lap as well there. Red Bulls third and fourth ahead of Lando Norris, Leclerc, Ricardo, Alonso, Gasly and Lance Stroll rounding out your top ten. There you can see the rest of your finishers as well. Just myself, Sykes and Sonoda all not making it through to the chequered flag. But yeah, it really looks like there was no drama later on in that race there. So it would have been eight laps of driving around uh, trying to just shred a set of the soft compound tyres when all is said and done. Championship-wise, though, Bottas still leads by two points over Hamilton by virtue of his fastest lap. Sergio Perez third ahead of Norris. Leclerc Verstappen jumps his way all the way up into sixth ahead of Gasly. Sykes there. Ricardo up to ninth ahead of Vettel. Alonso now into 11th as well with his first points of the year there ahead of Stroll and Sonoda. Ocon still yet to score alongside both Alphas, both Williams and both Haas. So 13 drivers already with points as the two Grand Prix isn't half bad either there. Mercedes still lead the way uh, with double the points of Red Bull there. Ferrari down to P3 tied with McLaren as well there. Alpha Tauri fifth ahead of Aston Alpine and then Alfa Romeo get the jump on Williams on account back there as well unfortunately but thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless if you have enjoyed do make sure you leave a like get yourself subscribed as well like we said we're trying to hit 20,000 subscribers at the moment so if you could help us get one step closer it would be greatly greatly appreciated but yeah we will be back tomorrow ready for the monaco grand prix it was such a big opportunity in the my team video today you guys do not want to miss it None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members, so a massive, massive thank you to the Travesty, Patrick and Chuan for being a member of the channel. If you guys want to help us out as well, obviously you can join for just £1 a month with some other exclusive perks by clicking the join button down below.